Doing a little video today, uh, getting up underneath the 911. Going to start on brakes, putting in a master cylinder. This is a 911E. So 911Es and S's had aluminum brake calipers. The T's did not. So may have to get some, I don't know, special detailing on these. But wanted to definitely document all the before and after and the extent of what kind of detail and cleaning up and everything with the uh, dust cover back here. The uh, tie rod ends. These actually look pretty good, by the way. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm underneath tight, tight conditions, tight circumstances here. But yeah, we're going to start working on the brakes today. So here's what we're actually talking about: letting them loose. Um, the supplies that come out of the reservoir here, just let them loose. Here they are, right here. They actually go into the floorboard um, down here beneath the driver's side, then come through the firewall. So they go down here's where your legs where your feet where your pedals are at actually down under there but um, you can fish and follow them around and then loosen them and uh, give them a little slack to pull them down and then when you're done you just pull them back up and tighten them back up again might want to address all these fittings and look and see if you need new hoses which i'm saying we might but we're going to get all this cleaned up we're going to we're going to degrease today we're going to degrease everything in here this is going to the body shop and uh I'm gonna try to get this as degreased as we can and uh, also pull the motor and degrease the engine. So before we send it to the body shop, we're gonna try to degrease everything we can, hit it with the power washer, get everything as What am I talking about? I'm the body shop. I'm the guy doing the body work. You know, just one, yeah, I'm sorry. Here's the other piece we're gonna start with today. Um, finish up the body work on the 911E. Uh, fuel system. Yeah, well, it all starts with the fuel tank. And this one, it looks usable, doable. Uh, definitely gonna have to get a new seal. I don't think this seal's gonna make it. But, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we go back with this? Looks like the uh, kind of the chip guard undercoating stuff that they use on the underside. I, th I believe these are supposed to be gray, if I'm not mistaken. We'll try to find a factory color. This does look black. I'm pretty pretty sure a lot of this is factory. This undercoating type stuff on here. But um, yeah, we're gonna remove this. Actually, get our sending unit back. Uh, check the tank, and ooh, she sounds. Like she might have a little bit of material in her. But yeah, I think this is the factory color here, the gray. And uh, we'll see if we need to do any welding or whatever. But this looks like uh, this looks like about eight hours of uh, grinding and welding and making it look great again. So I ended up ordering a new seal. Some guys use their own, make their own. We're gonna try to use a factory seal similar to this one. But yeah, that's that's coming off real nice. We're using the Death Wheel 5000 over here. A little wire brush action. Just to try to get down in some of these areas and see if we did have, you know, any concerns where we're going to weld this thing up. It, she's pretty solid. And, uh, of course, we'll seal it up with plastic coat on the inside. You've got to get a nice liner in there. And um, how far would you guys take this? Would you go ahead and take it down to bare metal and then put this gray undercutting back on? Or would you just shoot some new undercoating on after you install and paint this and make it look all nice and gray? It's like a different factory. Well, anybody, I don't. I don't know how far you guys would take it, but I think what's important is the uh, what's on the inside. No rust, no free roaming particles and particulates that's going to end up clogging up your fuel system. So that's what we're seeking. We're looking to get a good clean <coughs> fuel source and tank, and this factory tank I think is going to work. So a lot of guys use like uh, marbles, nails, even I've, I've seen some guys use chat, and they'll go down in there and. They'll, uh, they'll try to break up the, the rust and the scale that's on the inside of the tank. I use, I use a long chain for this, you know. The trick is just put a bolt at the end of the chain so it doesn't go down in there, but 
basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little CrossFit workout and we're gonna try to get the chain into all different areas where there could be some scale. And I know what you're saying, you know, are all the chain links gonna get down in here where it's really tight? Well, actually there's a lot of depth. There is a pinch point down here, um, but I can feel the chain going all around, but there's a, there's a lot of scale. There's a, a lot of rust that has to be taken care of on the inside of the tank before we ever think about lining. So we're gonna try to knock as much loose as we can. We're gonna use one of those, I don't know, CLR, one of those products or um, muriatic acid. How about muriatic acid? We're gonna try to get all the rust that we can, treat it before we ever talk about putting that plastic coat, the, the red stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Ready coat, fuel take liner. But before you can ever think about getting that stuff out, you got a lot of work here. You got a lot of rocking and shaking and, and uh, you know, we may end up putting some nails down in there. Get them back out with a magnet. We may end up using rocks, marbles. I've seen all kinds of things. I watched this sleeper do. I watched Vice Grip Garage. I've seen those guys work on some tanks before. So that's what we're doing. It's not really how the outside looks. That's the aesthetics. It's how clean the inside gets before you line that tank. Just a one man show here. Don't have uh, the uh, fancy camera tripod set up, but this chain, as you can tell, has been in, it's been in the fight, guys. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, you can tell it's knocking some stuff loose. So it's doing what we want to do. And you got to catch your breath every once in a while. You know, you're shaking, you're rattling, you're rolling, you're flipping. You're getting all these little chain links up against the inner walls of the tank. This is going to be a fun day. So we're not stopping every time, but this is the kind of stuff we're getting out. And uh, we're using the vacuum cleaner too. So we're trying to break up and get all that out that we can. I know a lot of you guys are thinking, why not just hit, take the power washer and get some water going in there? It takes forever for them to dry, first of all. And I wanna get the scale, I wanna get all the, the loose stuff on the inner walls knocked off first before we ever start thinking about rinsing. And um, you know, whether or not we use CLR or muriatic acid, um, we're going to use we're going to use something pre to pre coat and wash all the walls and then we'll rinse out. Then we'll give the tank a couple of nice hot days out here in the beautiful sun. Look, just beautiful spring weather. What a great outdoor occasion to work on an old car. Anyway, <laughs> that's where we're at. We are restoring tanks today. So after about <clears throat> I don't know an hour of doing this and you know the chain the chain's working. The chain's taking off stuff in there that, you know, this is about, you know, five minutes of shaking and rocking and flipping and twisting and, you know, doing all that, doing all that, that chain stuff in there. And it's doing a good job. Then a guy starts asking himself, hey, how much was a new 911 tank? Just, you know, is this going to be, you know, worth it? So here's what we got. <coughs> Found an extra... M22. By the way, take both of these plugs out when you're trying to clean all the stuff. You're not gonna believe what came out of this and the chain did a great job knocking off all the scale and stuff on the inside. So now we got about half a gallon of muriatic acid in there and we're sloshing the muriatic acid all around and we're gonna do a rinse. We're gonna do a rinse, we're gonna clean that off. Then we're gonna give this thing, I don't know, 48 hours. You know, get out here and get some good drying time, get the air hose on it. And uh, then we're gonna try the, the red coat. You know, see if we can put a liner in this thing. $500 or, you know, five hours work. I, I don't know, guys. You decide. Okay, so we ended up using, you know, like a gallon of that stuff, the muriatic acid. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's powerful. It's real powerful. Some guys are going to say use CLR. Some guys are going to say use this, use this. We use muriatic acid. Let me tell you something. Well-ventilated area. Wear a mask gloves the whole nine yards if you've never used that stuff before don't just don't walk away walk away get away from it um but anyway we uh did the same same drill muriatic acid slosh it all around in the tank um and i wish i'd had the capability to do a before and after and let you see down inside how now the walls are just shiny and silver and and uh uh galvanized looking no kidding. Uh, after that muriatic acid hits it and treats it and 
and it doesn't take long. It was only in there for about five minutes. I sloshed it around and then we rinsed it with a hose and um, we're good, we're clean. Uh, feel pretty good about it. Gonna let it sit out here a couple days, air hose, vacuum, air hose, vacuum, air hose, vacuum, and then uh, we'll try to put a liner in it. So this plug is probably the best way to show you what the inside of the tank looks like now. This thing was just scaled and just nastiness. This was the uh, M22 plug that goes on the tank and it was rusty and nasty and scaly even after cleaning but then when you put the muriatic acid on it that's uh, basically what the inside of the tank looks like that's pretty powerful stuff but like i said don't don't do what i do you know look and see what other people recommend some people say clr some people say use you know different things that's how i clean the tank um, i'll give it a few days to to dry uh vacuum it uh, take the air hose, try to help the process along, and then we're going to put the plugs back in, and we're going to uh, line it with the uh, the red coat. So yeah, we're going to keep blowing the tank out, um, using the air hose, and you know, give it a couple days dry out real good before we put this stuff on. But I want to show you, this is probably about half of what we actually got out um, using the chain, just rocking the chain for, it, it felt like a couple hours, guys, and uh, do the chain, vacuum, do the chain, vacuum, but we were also air hosing and having stuff fly out of there as well, but now that the sides are clean, um, wish I had the capability like a little bore scope to go down there and show you and let you see down inside just how clean and shiny and silver, it almost looks like galvanized in there, um, and uh, yeah. Okay, last update. Still waiting to shoot the car. Uh, weather. Um, we're fighting storms and systems moving in and out, so we thought we'd start polishing on our, our Fuchs here. We do have a day-coated set of uh, uh, 1970 14 inches, which 911 East came with. We're not going to be running those on the car. Um, just the spare, but uh, we'll be a 14 incher. But uh, yeah, we're going to go 15 inch by 7 on the back and uh, the flat. 15 by sixes on the front. Um, these wheels came uh, with the black center. Um, the, uh, the whole thing was, was black. So uh, they didn't go to a lot of, um, I don't know what you want to call it, prep work. These, these were pretty rough on the inside. So once you get the paint stripped off, there's a lot of scratches. And there was also another coating um, similar like a, I, I don't even know how to describe it, but um, we started off with 400 wet dry, switched to 600, and um, it's just it's just uh, a matter of going in and getting your scratches, um, just taking them down, taking them down, taking them down, and finding and doing as much polishing as you can get done with your wet dry paper before you actually start um, with a, a buffing compound and uh, really bring them up. I do like all the the rims. On these wheels, uh, never been curved, never been damaged. Uh, this is a good set of wheels, and these aren't cheap. Um, but anyway, um, that's what we're going to try to get done, and hopefully we can um, get a video sometime soon of the car after paint, after it gets shot. But right now, that's flooding. We've got a lot of rain coming. We just had a lot of rain last night, so we're just getting as many projects done as we can. So wheel polishing, a lot of fun. Okay, sorry, apologize about the wind been a minute since we've done a video but just kind of a 911 update been doing body work and <clears throat> knocking out some other little projects got the uh, sending unit tested it's actually maybe off of a later car but uh, sending unit is all good we actually lined the tank that's what this video is all about tank lining we got the new I can pull it off I have to start the video over or set this phone down but we got the new fuel barb with the uh, filter sock, came with the gasket, thank God. So, uh, that's 80 bucks. Some people actually ask more than 80 on that. But, uh, just, <coughs> yeah, continuing body work, uh, doing some final prep, uh, blocking out feather fill. Uh, go to do some painting in a few days, building on makeshift little paint booth here blocking sanding blocking sanding you know 
getting real close. But uh, yeah, that's the 9-11 update. So update on the 911, or did have to replace the um, the back aluminum panel, which on all 911 S's and E's, they were aluminum. This one has gone through a lot of heating cycles. Uh, this is the factory one. There was some modifications and damage. This, this is really brittle stuff, guys. This almost feels like some kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crunchy. And the support pieces that we're rubbing in on the back, See, this one's gone and this was all, all the way through and you just take your fingernail and take it. I didn't want to bother this thing up um, and use it, especially with all the, so this was pretty much non-negotiable. So we replaced it. Uh, but the new dance piece, if I pronounce that right, this is going to be worked a little bit. The spot welds on their reinforcements are actually coming through, so I wanted to make some kind of effort to get those down probably not behind the license plate bracket but these that sit out here i'm definitely going to uh, be working those today got some self-etching primer for the aluminum and then we'll prime and get that ready for paint also um we did the uh epoxy primer uh we got the full car done with feather fill and we blocked the entire car um, with 200. We're going to block the car again with 400 before we shoot, but the bumpers, so I have to put chip guard on this, um, the lower bumper sections, but did the guide coat, blocked everything out, um, real straight, and that's where we are. Actually, I can roll this out and probably give you a better picture. So like we were saying, we're going to block it one more time with 400, go all around, prep it for paint. Body work took a couple months. Uh, the weather's just now getting warm. We're able to get out in the shop and do some things. Like I said, this is the last piece we got to work and get ready to go. Um, feather fill was not fun. It was a chore, um, blocking, sanding. Yeah, but if it pays off, it pays off. But um, yeah, so that's where we're at. We're to the, gotta get some paint mixed and get a booth and get a guy to shoot it. And uh, there's your 911, 71 911 ED update. update. Today's headliner day. That's the back of the headliner. We're putting the headliner in the car today. Yay! Don't know how the lighting's gonna be. We have wrinkles. But we still have some things we can do to pull some of them out. The ones in the back are definitely gonna come out when we pull and stretch the back. But we'll see. i do a little update video on that pretty soon. We got the getting the motor back this week from the machine shop. I uh, already got the heads. Give you an update on the 911 before I post the video. Uh, so it's been a year. Cut out all the rust. Um, new floors, a lot of welding, body work. All done right there. Waiting list, really long. Competent people are really expensive and guess what? They've got long waiting lists in my area. So we wanted to get the car back on the road. We decided to do our own body work. By we, I mean me. And uh, pretty pleased. Um, first time I ever shot paint. This is single stage, but I'm really pleased with the color. This is factory bush green. And this is a BAS, if, if you're interested, BASF. I do have a paint code. Uh, we went through a couple different samples and we didn't get anything we could, you know, just wasn't happier with it with the tint and you know how that goes it's just that's uh, close it's close it's close but i think they nailed it i can leave that in the comments or description um in the process of installing got all the rubbers in new weather stripping um carpets here's a tip 
you gotta start at the A pillar. So if you've got bad A pillar fabric or material, you gotta start there and then it's a process. You gotta come back along the road, at least with this carpet set, that's all I'm saying. So I think this is a heritage kit and they now have beige and this car was born code 77 bush or leaf green. And uh, it was one of the pastel green colors, pretty rare. And it had uh, air conditioning. First year is what I'm told for 1970 from the factory. There were three different companies here in North America that put it in, but yeah, just looking at our door cards. Door cards are original. They're looking good. Uh, not so much on our pockets. We're having to do some um, rebuilding on those. Um, what we don't have or can't find in our boxes, we um, we buy and what we can't buy or find, we're just gonna, you know, let it roll until we do. So uh, yeah, carpet's going in, installed new rear shocks. You saw the master cylinder already on this video. Uh, brake lines. I'm pretty sure all of these calipers are going to be rebuilt. 911S's and 911E's um, had aluminum calipers. So that's going to be fun. Um, fuel system, still need to blow it out, uh, blow the line and uh, replace the rear filter. Um, electrical system, going to send the, um, uh, the uh, generator um, to the uh, to the rebuild, the reman. Um, see if we can get a Good. It may, may just be fine. The last time this car was driven, guys, is in the 80s, and it was used for parking lot stuff, like SCCA type stuff. And as you saw in the, the videos or the pictures that uh, previous owner was able to give me, um, car was in pretty bad shape. We're just trying to get it back into a reasonable street car type condition. This wasn't, if I was going to do a concourse and a rotisserie and all that stuff, spend a lot of money, send it away, and, you know, not see it for a long time. This is to get the car back on the road, and that's what we're doing. Need to install glass, need to sand and buff the car. Got new wheels and tires. Um, these are 205-15s, I believe. Yeah, we went with the 205-60-15. Uh, 15 by 7s on the back, 15 by 6s on the front. Not a matching set, so don't beat me up on that. You get There's a lot of things you can beat a person up on originality, but... I just don't like the 14s. I, I do like the 15s better. Um, I'm not going to be putting the, the trim work back on uh, the bumpers or the rocker or the front bumper. I have all that stuff. It's in decent shape. Uh, we did put a new headliner in it. Uh, that took two attempts. I'm not going to lie to you. That took two attempts. So like I said, you can either get in a waiting list and pay a lot of money or you can learn how to do stuff yourself in the area that I live. So uh gosh new 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 um gas yeah, struts for the hood hinges um like i said all of our weather stripping all of our all of our rubbers are new uh rubber seals on our 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 lights um looking at a company called 911 house h-a-u-s uh they're online they've got some different light options i'm not going to be going with the sugar scoops I'm not going to keep them in a box okay but uh probably either euro headlights or they got some really neat LED stuff out now that I've uh, been seeing on some of the backdated cars, but um, going to upgrade there. I don't know. Uh, will I get the air conditioning working? I hope. I hope. Need a bad. Not going to go with the two 6 volts. Uh, going to go with one 12 volt. I don't know what else I can tell you guys. Oh, got a new dash pad. Uh, the little, um, they're not rivets, they're actually clips. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble with mine. Mine were really brittle. I tried to Super glue mine back onto my original dash pad, or not the original dash pad, but the, the new dash pad. And uh, anyway, I think it's going to make a pretty car. And uh, that's the update. As of the first week of June, that's how she sits. So hopefully this time next year, I don't know. Still got to get in the power bar. Find out what's going on with the old 2.2 back there. We don't know why the car was parked, okay? Could be sitting there needing full rebuild. It does still have the original MFI. It does still have the original motor. So we do have a set of Webers we can put on this car if it would get it on the road faster. But just want to drive it and enjoy it. But that's our update on the 7911 E Coupe.